Okay, on to the political news. Well, it's been an interesting year, and frankly, there isn't enough time to do all the political news, so we'll just pick a few. First of all, people, the world's on fire. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> there are civil wars everywhere, but not in Iraq. No, that's not a civil war. Like this George W. Shea show, that's why. <laughs> But really, don't be panicked, because they'll just send Condi Rice to take care of everything. Ooh, little Condi, little puppet Condi Rice. Ooh, little puppet. Ooh, when she opens her mouth, you can see George's head. His head is so far up her ass. Ooh, I'm Condi Rice, I'm Condi Rice. I mean, really, that performance with the Lebanon-Israeli war thing, man, that was just brutal. Is it just me? There she's over there going, ooh, we don't want to ask for an immediate ceasefire. We don't want to ask for an immediate ceasefire because we want a long-term resolution. You, we want a lo you want a long-term resolution? I got a clue for you, sister. Moses wanted a long-term resolution. <laughs> what, are we stupid? Oh, and of course that mental case from North Korea, Kim Il Ding Dong fucking Cuckoo Bing Bong. <laughs> Launching missiles, testing nukes, and why, why? I think this guy is an easy fix, people. Classic case of short man syndrome. Somebody get him a pair of heels, okay? <laughs> God, it works for Prince. He's perfectly well adjusted. And of course, the British terror flight thing went on this summer. I had no idea what I could take on a plane anymore. Absolutely no idea. I mean, who does, right? For a while there, it was like, you can wear your contacts, but you can't bring any solution. Ooh, that's fun on a long haul flight. <laughs> spit my eye, spit my eye, which could be offensive in some country. That could start an international incident. <laughs> Sure, you can bring the baby on the plane, but you gotta test the formula on the kid first. If she doesn't explode, then you're good to go. <laughs> and my favorite, oh ladies, it's okay to bring your feminine hygiene products, but you have to put them in a clear plastic bag. <laughs> Who wants to sit next to her? <laughs> Believe you're in my seat. Okay, uh, I didn't wanna sit next to her. In the meantime, George W. Bush is turning into Ronald Reagan in his later days, okay? Honestly, he is starting to lose it, okay? I'm seriously telling you the truth. When after that foiled terror flight with the, the plot with the British planes, he went on TV and he thanked the nation of Tony Blair. Yes, he did. So I want to thank the nation of Tony Blair. The nation of Tony Blair. I've always wanted to go to the nation of Tony Blair, but I've never gotten any further than the province of Linda. I, not just the usual stupid grammar stuff, people. I'm not talking about that. I don't care that he said shit on an open microphone at the meeting he was at the GH Summit, whatever. I don't care about that. Did you see him? He was eating a roll. It was coming out of his mouth. I'm like, well, for even say this. I think I've got to talk to Kofi. I'm like, he's spitting everywhere. Like, chew and swallow, chew and swallow, George. Chew and swallow. And then at the other meeting, he walked up behind the German chancellor, the first woman ever to be, and he started giving her a back rub. I mean, he's like rubbing her, and you saw her. She behaved like she had just gotten out of her first YWCA self-defense class. He rubbed her shoulder, she went, nine, nine, nine. <laughs> and he went and sat down like, what, what was it me? You watch that on YouTube. She turns to the guy next to her, and the guy next to her goes like this and points at George. <laughs> While all that was going on, he managed to get his ass on a plane and fly back to the United States and veto a bill on stem cell research. Because, oh, people, oh, you don't know. You've never heard those stem cells scream when you put them in a pot of water. Oh. <laughs> and in the meantime, now people don't even, they don't even pay attention to his misspeaks. That happened, like, I don't know, about by the beginning of this year. He actually was going off about Rumsfeld again. You know, the first, the second time, I think they were going to can him. And he's like, we're not going to, can't, no. He's, I'm the decider. I'll decide when. I'm the decider. Right? And everybody's making fun of him. Like, he's a fascist. There's these little things on the internet. And I'm like, fascist, whatever. Yeah, of course. But decider, is that even a word? Why isn't anybody saying anything about the fact that I'm the decider? I'm the decider. I'm the decider. <laughs> I mean, have we just decided to skip the fact that he can't speak anymore? And then I thought, well, maybe I should look the word up, right? Maybe it is a word. And I looked it up, and it actually is a word. Decider is a word. Just doesn't sound like a word when it's coming out of that moron's mouth, right? And then I got to thinking, oh, my God, can you imagine what your life would be like if you were an actual legitimate word? How nervous you would be all the time that George W. Bush might actually use you and ruin your credibility? I mean, what if you were nuclear? You'd be like, don't say me, don't say me. Nuclear. <laughs> and, 
of course, the big thing he did this year to really try to distract all of the Americans from the immigration debate. He started the immigration debate, or as I like to call it, the don't look at that Iraq behind the curtain debate, okay? <laughs> And the reason I bring this up, people, is because uh, this sums it up all for me. I was down there this summer, I'm watching CNN, and this guy comes on who owns a cheesesteak place in Philly. And I don't know if you read about this, but he actually put a sign in his window that said he wouldn't wait on you if you didn't speak English, okay? Of course, the sign was in English. <laughs> You gotta love him, huh? Anyway, so he's on CNN and they're interviewing, and his name is like Gino or something. I'm not kidding, all right? And he's like, and, and the interviewer says to him, so Gino, what's this about? He goes, well, the thing is, Mary, no kidding, because the thing is, if the customer comes up to the window and wants to order a sandwich, they gotta speak English, Kabich. I'm like, <laughs> These are my people. Um, 